OK, so next we're going to look at using the standardised tables in order to calculate normal distribution probabilities. Just like the binomial tables that we saw previously, there are pre-calculated published tables for us to look up probabilities associated with the number of standard deviations away from the mean. So these are all based on the fact that z follows a normal distribution where the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. This is what we call the standardised normal distribution. We'll look at how we can turn any distribution into this distribution later on. But for now, if we're working with the standardised normal distribution, how do we find our probabilities? So, what is the probability that z is less than 0? All right, so this is the mean plus no standard deviations. And we should now be comfortable with the fact that the probability is less than the mean is going to be 0 0.5. What about the probability that z is less than the mean plus one standard deviation? We may be able to recall this from the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, or we can just use this handy table. And I'm going to look up this z score of one. So the z score here of one, I'm going to look up in the table, and that lets me know the probability that is less than or equal to one is 0 0.8413. So, for any normal distribution, the probability that it's less than one standard deviation away is what we just found before, is 0 0.8413. And that's just a little bit more accurate than our 68, 99.7 rule. Okay, what if it was less than one and a half standard deviations? Once again, we'll would look up this z-score, 1.5, in the tables, and we get 0 0.9332. So this is how we can make use of the tables to find our probabilities. It does go a little bit further than that. And here we're going to bring in back one of our properties of the normal distribution, which was symmetry. These tables are only going to tell me less than or equal to a particular z-score. What if I wanted to know greater than a particular z-score? So the probability to z is greater than 1. On the diagram, I'm looking for this region shaded here. I can't look that up directly in the tables, but I can look up this blue region in the tables, and I'm going to end up doing 1 minus the blue region. The blue region is the probability that z is less than 1. We saw that previously to be 0 0.8413, which leads to my final answer of 0 0.1587. OK, so I can use the 1 minus technique that we used previously with the binomial distribution to help me find some probabilities. So that's actually the, prop the property that all of them add up to 1. So because we know the probability should add up to 1, I can make use of this 1 minus. OK, what about this case? The probability that z is less than negative 1.5. Well, on my diagram, this is the area that I'm looking for. I can't look this up on the table. If you notice, the table only reads from 0 and above. And I've got less than negative 1.5. Because the normal distribution is symmetrical, this probability and this area is exactly the same as being greater than positive 1.5. So this is where the symmetry of the normal distribution comes in. So to help me find the probability that z is less than negative 1.5, I'm instead going to use the probability that z is greater than positive 1.5. OK, I'm still not quite ready for the tables because the tables will only tell me less than statements. So I know that this, so I know this is the probability, this is the same as the probability that z is less than 1.5. And once again, this can be looked up in the tables. All right, leaving us with an answer of 0 0.0668. Okay, so two ways that we used those previous properties of a normal distribution. We can use the symmetry and we can use the fact that all of the probabilities should add up to one or the total area underneath the curve is one to then go ahead and solve a variety of different probability statements. The probability that z exists in between these two values. So if this was my 1.54 and this is my 0 0.56, I'm trying to find the probability that it exists in between these two values. The standard technique to do this is first I'm going to find this red area here. From there, I'm going to subtract this blue area and that will leave me with the interval that I was looking to find. OK, so that red area is the probability that z is less than 1.54. And from there, we'll subtract the probability 
that z is less than 0 0.56, and that should lead us to our answer. So less than 1.54, we'll find that in the tables. And from that, I'm going to subtract the probability that it's less than 0 0.56. Okay, and that leads us with our answer of 0 0.2259. So this area here, the area that I've shaded black, is going to be 0 0.2259. We started with the larger value. We found out the area below that. We started with the second or the smaller value, and we found the area below that, and we subtracted the two of them from each other, which left us with the probability statement that answered the original question. Okay, so be careful with the way that you rearrange these statements and put them together. You're going to need some practice on this. You're going to need to draw diagrams for every question that you do. You're going to need to be careful, are you doing a one minus? Are you doing a reflection? And are you finding the area or the probability in between two particular values? Okay, so get some practice with this and using the tables and we'll get moved on to how to use the calculators to help us with this in a future lesson.